All right. So just a few uh, updates from the, so from the search engine team. Um, so I think we kind of finally figure out uh, what they are trying to do. So they are trying to kind of build a kind of data infrastructure uh, for all the teams to be able to build their own pipeline um, and to experiment within the same environment. So they have basically they have the, the pre-processed data set that Brendan has made um, on the sort of server, but we can also upload our own data sets to the server um and also they so so far they have included uh the umls like a medic biomedical oncology entities but we can include others if we um if we think that uh, something else is more helpful for us so i think because uh, i i i think those uh, medical entities haven't been really useful for our task because it's all like about disease, cell, protein, gene, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think Kevin Lee will be able to help us to see if we can incorporate other, uh, like a database of ontologies that can kind of help us with our pipeline. So that's one. Um, and so the others is that this morning I also onboarded to um, I like to, yeah. uh, got disconnected or something. Oh, can you hear me now? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So uh, I onboarded two other uh, members, uh, Dimitro and Nissin, and I don't know what they will be working on yet. I, I told them to kind of look at the the categories and the tables and, and just let me know what they're interested in. Um, so they should be able to help out um, Janice or they may maybe take on another category of uh, data extraction. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the news. So what are some um, updates from you guys that what you're working on and uh, any blockers that we can uh, get help? Um, I was extracting the UIDs from the, the curated tables. So right. there are 211 of them. I extracted 200 of them. There are 11 of them that I couldn't find the UID because uh, of non-matching study titles right. and right. non-matching links. So that's that's what I was curious about. Um, is it because, like, what, what is the reason for that? Is it because the way the data is collected? Like, because I thought all the um, um, kind of articles in the table should be from the I yeah, I, I suspect it's because there has been uh, several versions of data being released over time. So right now it's version nine. So there's just some like incompatibilities like in these versions, they keep like updating using different UID, for example, and I don't really know. So maybe their data is from older version um, and that's not somehow I don't know, something changed in the newer metadata. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, no worries. But Just... I, yeah. So, but eventually we will uh, have to um, get that set of articles ourselves anyway. So the purpose of retrieving articles from those tables is just to help us get some data set to start building the functions physically. Okay, okay, gotcha. And then I will, uh, yeah, I will, my next step will be to query the data from Elasticsearch. And I have mm -hmm. a question. Um, so how is the Elasticsearch data different from the one in Google Cloud Platform? Because I noticed that um, earlier- Sorry, you kind of faded out a little bit. Can you- Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you hear me better? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I was just wondering what, how is the Elasticsearch um, data uh -huh. different from the Google Cloud Platform? Because- uh, uh, earlier, Brandon uh, was that the uh, code for, to query data from Elasticsearch, and then earlier there's a version by Alex. Um, oh, okay. Data from Google Cloud. Are, are they the same data, just in two different places? Or 
I see. So Alex, uh, did you, you pull the full text, right? Like what, which data set did you pull from the Google Cloud? Yeah, so I, um, I mean, so that's, that's just a bash script for, uh, for pulling the full text. Uh -huh. uh, well, it's like, it's actually like the, it's the one that he parsed out into individual sentences. Okay, so it's already broken down by sentence. So each row right. is one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, you can swap it out for whatever you want. You right. know, like it's, it's fairly easy. I um, haven't done a whole lot with Bash though. So, you know, um, but yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that's, and that was part of like, well, I don't know, but Janice can keep going with her thing and we can talk about some later, but. Oh, no, I was just curious. Um, can I query, can I get the full text based on the core UID? If I use the. Uh, uh, I, I believe that it has, let me see, do I have it up here? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a core UID uh, as one of the columns in that, uh, in those files that you download. The, what is it called? Uh, V8, V8 process text. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, I they will. Just, they just uploaded V nine. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, and that's and that's fine. Like you just need to swap out yeah. probably just exactly. nine. So uh, and and re-download it. Um, but I will say like it's it's a lot. Like yeah. uh, it's like nine gigs, nine and a half gigs in RAM for just three of the nineteen parts. So I think a lot of them it's because they twenty parts. It yeah. also included like the lemma of. Uh -huh. all all the sentences and uh, all those uh, UMLS entities. So That's why it's huge. Yeah. So Brandon, I, there. sorry? I was like, Brandon, uh, there's five uh, ENR uh, uh, application or models that uh, Ren uh, parsed the whole entire database with. So it's nine, it's nine gigs because there's five different outputs uh, all oh, in okay. one like data set. And so it's UMLS plus everything else. Um, so that's why it's like nine gigs. Mm, mm, okay. Yeah. So what I used to do is I, I would just uh, get rid of those UMLS <laughs> because uh, I just, I just want to use those, uh, just the text part. Uh, but I don't know if that the other, uh, those entities would be useful for your work, uh, Janice. So maybe you can just kind of take a look and see if you think it's too big, you can just probably subset it and it's easier okay. to work on like collab or something. I see, I see. And so the one from Elasticsearch, basically the difference is that the Elasticsearch, you just search for a UID and you get the text, whereas uh, Google, call, Google platform, you have to download everything and then filter it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. But the output is the same in both um, places, is that right? I believe so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, awesome. So, okay. So, uh, so you're thinking like some approaches that you might be investigating in terms of extra five okay. years? Yeah. That one I have, I need to look into more um, details. Okay. Sure. Right now I, I just uh, focus on getting the data first. Yeah. I'll, I, will, I will inspect, then I can inspect the data and see. Uh, how to work. Yeah. Okay, great. So. Kevin, we, we just kind of talked about like uh, how do we maybe uh, enrich the data set with um, like oncology or entities that would be useful for ties. Do you yeah. have thoughts on that? So, so the whole aspect of, of, of uh, oncologies, UMS and everything else, it, it's so complicated and there's a lot of nuance and uh, there's been a lot of discussion about it. Uh, so. The the simpler uh, the simplest answer is using using UMLS. UMLS is essentially an aggregated collection of dictionaries and ontologies at least that are more frequently used throughout a uh, scientific uh, community. Um, and then they uh, organize it by a CUID or your custom plus ID. And then with other packages in Python or however you do it, you can convert that CUID to ICD, um, SNOMED, uh, LOINC. Or whatever terminology you need to, for the most mm. part, um, that's like the easiest, simplest way. Just because uh, with Brandon and like I think Cy, Cy uh, Spacey, uh, they integrate uh, 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 name entity recognition, so it takes out anything within all of the data sets and terminology in UMLS. It's not exclusively everything. Um, mm. I think that's what like the search engine 
issues were. But overall, it does get a good snapshot of everything. So okay. the better question would be, what do you guys need? And and is can everything be covered in UMS, or do we need to do other things to to, to extract out? Um, that's right. like the that's like the basic question for me. Right. So I think I, I'm just curious about whether they actually capture those like special terms, like for example, maybe it's it's too simple, like incubation period. Would yeah. that be mm -hmm. some term that's captured as like an entity? Uh, yeah, those those will be captured. Um, it's more of like, can you find whatever ver like where like term you want in any respectable dictionary, fictional uh, uh, dictionaries essentially. And so, if you're like more focused for um, like either transmission methods or scientific methods, you have to find the respective um, uh, dictionary at least to like accurately label it. If you're just going to just grab it and have it as like a huge pool, you unless will do it by default. But if you want to like categorize like, you know, like incubation, it, like that term is categorized under, you know, a uh, method of transport, you know, by like some, some, you know, like uh, uh, its own uh, like transmission dictionary. Mm -hmm. Then that's the, the, that's like the second half that might not happen if you don't have, if you don't know that dictionary. Um, but usually UMS will take like special like scientific terms like incubation into account and it will capture that out. I yeah. see. So is there like a a place that we can look up different dictionaries that will Yeah, I'll 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 put it into uh, I might have linked it before in ties, but I'll just I'll re add it in. Um okay. uh, yeah, because some other because searching was also trying to figure out or Jeremy and other people are trying to figure out. Is there a way to uh, do uh, ontologies that are more uh, not as common uh, because they might need those? And so there is another uh, alternative, but it requires a lot more time and, and energy to, to make the pipeline work. So if, you, if we can use MLS, we should use MLS just for the sake of. Simplicity. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, let me just, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so this should show all the different dictionaries that are the you know, vocabulary of the UMLS meta uh, thesaurus. And mm -hmm. so if you can find anything in there, it'll probably be in there for the most part. Um, if you can't, then another place to check where a term might be in, uh, especially when you have more granularity, mm -hmm. is uh, bio portal. Yeah, is BioPortal. This has, I think, for the most part, every single ontology in like the scientific community for the most part. Um, granted, like not all these are like fully aggregated into one, you know, a repository. They have their own API, but it is some sort of web call. So that's why, like, for doing a web call on our data set or like, our huge sentence data set, it's not necessarily that feasible unless you're okay with running it for hours at a time. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Okay, cool. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, I, yeah. I guess the, the other question is like, uh, so, so far we're relying on Brandon to, to incorporate those for us. So I don't know, like, what would be, um, so like, how, how do we use that? <laughs> so if, if we are only sticking to UMLS, then the simplest measure is he, like, the, that, like I, I actually asked him, like, <laughs> I think weeks ago, can you add a column just for this concept by these? Because right now, before it was just the, the the actual like him extracting out the name, uh, the entities, and then having it as its own like like list of in the column, which is great for just parsing through understanding similarities. But if you want to back reference that into any dictionary, you can't just because it's not really that possible. And so I added I asked him for the the CUID column. And so once you have the CUID column, you can run essentially an iterative loop. Uh, to map the CUID to whatever dictionary, oh. and then from there, then you can like you can run on your own side and not have to like. It, it cuts down the processing a little bit just because you unless still it takes a length amount of time to process, but then the other half is going and then converting that C, that CUID to any other ID within the respective dictionary. That uh -huh. part does take some time, um, and so like it will take some time to run overall, just the overhead time but it should be shorter. 
and mm. it will be more like task specific to each group or in this, in this case ties itself so you don't have to really rely on brandon as much it's right. more fine tuning of like just the process of running the ontology cool okay yeah. sounds great yeah yeah so okay i guess i just we just need to kind of look into the, the dictionaries, old dictionaries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just look at dictionaries. Find what if anything to be if anything you you like want can be like captured within those dictionaries, mm -hmm. uh, and then like and then see if if you just extract those out and then do a, either an EBA uh, if that gets what you what you need. Because um, mm -hmm. like the like the next not necessarily the next step, but the next step at least for like I think for our for risk that we know that we're gonna end up being is um relational matching or relational uh, under, like uh, uh, understanding that is more complicated and that part I don't think we have and I don't think any team currently has like figured out like a like the actual pipeline for it because it's too complicated at this point but it is something that if if if, uh, if I think most teams will will be like uh, trying to figure out how to do in the next like probably a few weeks right yeah. cool sounds great thanks yeah yeah uh, we, I think we, I think risk had issues. We had issues where um, you do have to, there's a lot of, let's say noise in, in a sense. There's also um, like you will find words that you want to capture and then words that end up being, you don't want to capture. Right. So like bear in mind, like uh, think of, I like, think like you'll have words that you want to capture then like just make sure that you also look for words that you know you have to exclude right but it, like both both uh sets will be somewhat overlapping just given like the, the huge scope of words and so that's the specific community so just be part of that because that was something that we ran into pretty early on i see yeah cool okay that's great yeah i guess we'll just kind of start from there and get get the data and yeah. just how we will use it yeah mm -hmm. yeah awesome Okay, so what are the other things? Okay, I think, yeah, I uh, mentioned that we have two new joins and I'm gonna place them into some other uh, task groups. And I think we still need a few more people that I would probably continue to work with Tyler or Daniel. Um, yeah, Alex, you're in. Do you have anything to update or questions or? Um, no, I guess one thing that uh, we had talked about before was utilizing some of this Kaggle, um, the AI powered literature of use CSVs. Mm. Um, and so I was looking at that a little bit and looking at Spacey's site um, on training additional entity types. And may, okay. maybe this is with what Kevin's brought up, maybe this is, you know, obsolete, but um, it said that uh, like ideally you'll have like a few hundred, a few hundred. Uh, for training. Okay. I think most of what they've got is like, I don't know, like not, not nearly as many. <laughs> uh, like they're, they're like, you know, half a dozen results or uh, so I think it may not be super valuable. Their, uh, their stuff. Right. So the other way I think in, uh, Brandon just shared that the UI of the for the search engine, Elasticsearch, I think. Yeah. And we can probably cut, try to use that to just, you know, for example, like time periods, we don't really need it to be an incubation, incubation period. It can be any time period. As long as the that format is like something that we're looking for, you know. Right. Yeah. So I think we can probably just expand or combine all of those that, have type years together, maybe it'll get us more. Or just, um, yeah, just, I, I don't know. I think, yeah, we can think about some ways to try to collect the training data, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're talking about. Mm. Okay, okay. And and I guess the other question is like, um, so some of these, for for example, the time periods, there are, some of them are, are, are relative to a specific question. Right. And so, uh, like, are we gonna, are we planning on just pulling them all out and then filtering later or is it better to, well, I mean, I, or I guess like the idea is that we, f we filter articles and whatever we're building is gonna filter whatever the input is. So it's already gonna be 
it's already going to be on pertinent articles. Yes, I, I yeah, I, I've been thinking about that too. I think we probably want to prioritize loads that are more general, like sample size, uh, how mm -hmm. that percentage, for example, and then for those more specific ones, maybe it was, we can probably do that in more downstream. Like, yeah, uh, yeah like one. I think that's good. I yeah. think it's smart. Um, so, so I mean, uh, from that perspective, uh, you know, I mean, we have like, uh, I don't know what 15 right now we have like two or three sample or two or three category or size. I think size was the category and yeah. then like a bunch of, is it better that we just like each pick just one of those subcategories? Mm -hmm. So like we just deal, like I just deal with sample size period, you mm -hmm. know, instead of trying to take like all of the time group, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we can, we can at least like, we, have, we can have a much more like a much more focused and then hopefully generalize, generalize a little bit from there. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the idea. Like we just take one category at a time and then, yeah. 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 And then we'll, we'll work from there. Yeah. That's good. Do you want to take the simple size? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could try it out. I mean, I'm really, I'm really indifferent if, if people have, you know, uh, any particular okay. uh, preference, I'm okay taking whatever, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for the sake of just accountability, it's probably good to have that written down somewhere for me, at least. Um, I'll, I'll create a trailer card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, cool. Then, okay, that's great. So, um, yeah, I think I think that's good. So we we have the main categories uh, taken. I think what else? Yeah, I think the the, the big ones are those uh, size, percentage, and the type here. Type here is the largest one. I'll find you more people, Janice. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, with that, um, because time period, we have like transmission, time period, incubation period. We also have time um, regarding number of days um, between hospital admission and death. Is that something that we should be able to extract and differentiate as well? So what I was thinking is um, we will uh, use, we will filter out, like do some filtering after like we will like select the articles and we'll filter what's this sentence about it's about incubation period or it's about time to hospitalization for example and then by yeah. the way we, we're gonna extract the time period from those sentences anyway so you know right okay time. yeah do we need do we need the algorithm to automatically be able to identify the context meaning is it, whether it's a transmission is an incubation i think yeah eventually like we we do need to not not context, but just for now, I was thinking just uh, be able to kind of get, get whatever time period that's in the sentence. That'll be great. Like as long as it, it's like okay. median, how many days, standard deviation, that kind of stuff. Like if we can just extract that, that'll be great. No matter what kind of time period that is. Okay, I see. Because I also see a lot of false positives in the sentence. So sometimes they say. Uh, days uh, yeah days, like that and then they say it's two days before something else happened so the right. two days before is probably a false positive that we don't want to take right so like previously i tried to only look at uh lows in the sentences in the results session because like you don't want to get um something reported in the introduction or discussion mm -hmm. Okay. either because that would be that would not be the actual study results of an article yeah so i think we'll need to do some of that sorting afterwards but right now i kind of just want to focus on that particular function that we could and then we'll think about the others after okay okay i see awesome cool and uh by the way i think brandon already broke out those sections mm. um yeah so there's there's a yeah, there's a column titled section, uh, so we could just filter the results. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's that that's uh, the thing. It's a little some a uh, little problem. It's not perfect. Exactly. But, so yeah. they're still working on other methods to make it cleaner. But yeah, that's right now. That's what we can use. Mm. Right. 
so okay so uh yeah we're gonna uh present our project tomorrow in the daily sync um thanks alice for helping me prepare and I'll, i will work on it later too and yeah i think that's uh that's it from me any other questions i don't think so well good Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Have a Thanks. good one. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye.